This country is full of amazing secrets, and tonight I'm going to show you one of the big ones. So that's why I'm in Gonda, 750 kilometers from the capital, Addis Ababa. Because I've come looking for Africa's Camelot, the castles of Gonda. And this is just one chapter in Ethiopia's long, long history. But mate, what a chapter. Emperors, kingdoms, capitals. Ethiopia's had quite a few of each. Gonda was the fourth capital, started in 1635 by Emperor Fazilatus. And for a grand emperor, one needs a grand palace. Oh, a balcony scene, a balcony scene. Romeo, Romeo, I can see your place from up here. For more than 200 years, it was all happening at Gonda. Visitors came from all around the world to see the enormous gardens and to eat amazing fish. Fossilides certainly started something and his rallies kept it going. His grandson, Iasu, built his palace right next door and the walls were covered in ivory and the ceilings dripping with gold. But alas, all that's gone now. But there's one thing he did build which has not lost one brushstroke of its beauty. Ethiopia is one of the oldest Christian countries on earth. It has hundreds of churches. And the Debri B. Ren Selassie is one of the most famous. It's a sort of who's who of saints and sinners. Yasu wasn't exactly a saint, but he was paying the bills, so he got himself painted in anyway. Now the ceiling is covered with angels, 112 to be exact, and no two are the same. Yeah, I've checked. Now sadly, a few of them have faded away. So UNESCO came in and tried to restore them, and they searched the world trying to find a colour match, but they could not. Sadly, the palette was lost forever. But there's one little bloke up there, I reckon they should have a yarn to. I think he knows something. He's got that knowing look. But you know what they say about all good things. In the end, all sorts of people were pulling all sorts of stuff and nobody could trust anybody. Not even your own family. The Yasu copped it in 1706. Everybody wanted to be top dog. And Yasu's eldest son couldn't wait, so he poisoned his dad. The church didn't like that, so they made his younger brother, DeWitt, the emperor. And DeWitt built this amazing concert hall before he was poisoned by his younger brother. You reckon you had strife in your family? These blokes had four emperors in 24 years. But the builders were busier than ever. Emperor Bekofu built the royal stables and banquet hall. But his wife, Mentua, she built the last of the Gondor castles. And nobody messed with her. Mentua wore the royal pants. She outlived her husband. She outlived her son. And she was queen of the castle until she died of a natural cause. Now, the moral of the story is simple. If you're a bloke and you want the top job, look over your shoulder. If you want the job done, give it to a woman. <laughs> what? What did I just say? By the 1850s, it was all over. New emperors set up new capitals elsewhere.